experts in the public health sector are coming together to find ways of accelerating progress in the fight against COVID-19. They are also trying to find ways to address long-standing health emergencies, such as HIV, AIDS, TB and malaria. The African Union is hosting a three-day conference later this year to tackle these issues. Let's discuss this further. We're joined by Dr. Bere Okereke, an honorary senior public health advisor of, uh, to Africa CDC. Thank you so much for your time, Doctor. We do appreciate it. I think this is uh, a great conference initiative that's going to discuss public health care on the African continent. We saw during the COVID-19 pandemic how uh, there were further concerns about access to public health care um, on the continent. Maybe just speak to us about this conference and the importance uh, of it. Um, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be able to uh, talk to you about this important issue. Um, public health is actually it's, it's a, a responsibility of governments and all of us to ensure that we have the systems in place to not just protect us from illness and diseases, but to promote well-being, because that's the foundation for any economy to grow. So we're quite um, uh, pleased that we have the opportunity as a continent to come together collectively to explore how we ourselves set the priorities for improving our ex health experience across the co uh, continent. Too often the talk about um, health in Africa and across the entire continent is about poor outcomes, death, malnutrition, um, infectious diseases. And we, we think that having a conference where we set the agenda to start to explore the solutions for ourselves is uh, the right uh, direction for us to go forward. So um, in the conference in, in, uh, that's going to be taking place in Rwanda in a few weeks' time, we'll be gathering experts, scientists, public health professionals, civil society, um, and everybody who has something to contribute to explore what are the priorities for improving the health experience of Africans across the continent, and how do we bring those solutions to bear. Certainly, because there's the saying that we need to provide uh, uh, African solutions for African problems. And while health care is the same across the country, it's about that accessibility. And I think it was further highlighted with the COVID-19 pandemic how the African continent, while many thought would be the hardest hit from the COVID-19 pandemic, we were last in line to receive those COVID-19 vaccines. And I'm sure this conference, and maybe you can tell us, Doctor, will further highlight and bring solutions to having access to health care and medicine and especially vaccines, given that we've been told that the COVID-19 pandemic is not the first or the last we will be seeing when it comes to these pandemics. Indeed. Um, we have to take responsibility for our, uh, the health of our populations. Too often we are dependent on the, glo the global north in particular to provide all the solutions. So we have very little manufacturing of pharmaceutical products on the continent. And as a consequence of that, when there is a global emergency, we're at the back of the queue. So efforts have actually already started to change that narrative. There's a lot of activity, as you know, here in South Africa to expand our pharmaceutical industry to bring manufacturing of essential products, vaccines, therapeutics, and the diagnostic, the tests you actually need to know who's got what illness, to increase the capacity to produce those here. And it's important that we bring together the policy leaders across the continent so that we can set the priorities for where that resource, the resources we generate are invested. Um, so, for, for example, yes, you mentioned that, that with COVID, um, we didn't do as badly as um, uh, the world expected us to do. And that was because we had many years of experience of responding to emergencies and optimizing the use of the resources that we did have. And we have to continue to build on that. But we also need to identify the gaps we had and address those. And manufacturing essential health products is part of that story, but that's not everything. We need to ensure that we coordinate a little bit better. We need to make sure that we communicate a bit better so that we're, the citizens know what we expect them to do and they trust the message that comes from the health professionals, from the politicians when there's a public health emergency. Mm -hmm. So these are amongst the things that we'll be exploring in this conference. How do we do better? How do we leverage what we've learned from the pandemic? Because there will be another pandemic. It is the nature of, uh, of, of the world that as humans, the population continues to grow, 
climate changes, the likelihood of new infections emerging and causing problems uh, is very real. Mm. I want us to speak about the issue of resources. And uh, we do know that mm. uh, most parts of Africa is underdeveloped. And this, of course, is, uh, you know, it, it's going to have a huge impact on uh, access to health care. I mean, here in South Africa, you have many villages in a number of provinces that don't have basics like clinics, for example, and that limits people from getting uh, health care and getting the necessary help that they need. Uh, I'm sure that's also going to be a key discussion at this conference. Indeed. Indeed. One of the messages that we have to send to our politicians is that health is not a nice to have. Health is essential for any development. If we really want to develop our societies and grow our economies, then we have to ensure that our citizens have access to preventative care first and foremost because we would like them to remain healthy. But when they do get ill, that they have access to good quality health care that is appropriate for their needs. And to do that, we need to invest in our health system. Too often, and the vast majority of the investment in the health services are dependent on foreign donations. We need to hold our governments to account to start to invest in the healthcare to see it as an investment rather than expenditure. And we, are, we have seen some improvement, but we have a long way to go. Um, we have to continue to advocate. We need to encourage civil society. When you're, there are elections coming, ask your elected politicians, what are you going to do to improve access to health care in my area? Those are some of the primary things that we will be discussing. How do we get politicians to engage much more effectively in this conversation? Mm, and you touched on something so profound. You said health care is not a nice to have. And, you know, I speak specifically specifically here for South Africa, we had um, serious corruption um, and allegations of uh, misappropriation of funds during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, tender procurement going wrong. Uh, and you ask yourself, how do politicians and those in government allow corruption especially to take place in the healthcare sector, be it here in South Africa or the rest of the African continent? Because, you know, people's lives are at stake. And I'm sure that you know, the issue of misappropriation of funds and corruption might also be something that will be discussed at this conference. Uh, I'm not sure if they would want to discuss it, but it definitely has an impact on, you know, the most vulnerable Indeed. people in our society that need health care and often don't get it because mm. of greedy politicians. Indeed, governance is, is a critical part of the health system globally. And the story you've just described about misappropriation of funds in the pandemic uh, and emergency is not a uniquely African one. They are equally eye-watering stories of sums of money being um, given out for procurement in an emergency that were not used as effectively as possible. We need to remind people that a misappropriated dollar, uh, rand, pound, um, shilling in a health service is potentially the difference between life and death for a child, for a woman, for a husband, a father, somewhere. Um, so, so it is part of the issue is that we need to make sure that we have good accountability systems so that the funds we do have are used most effectively and optimally. But there is still a need, far and for a priority to invest more money in the health system. So alongside investing more money, we also need to improve the quality of the systems that we use to manage that money so that it goes to where it's most um, needed. That requires significant planning. That requires us understanding the burden of diseases, the priorities, the effective treatments, especially using modern technologies, which are slightly more um, cost effective to produce new medicines to new, va new vaccines so that our pounds, our uh, shillings, our dollars, our rand can go a little further. It's a very complex challenge. And the weakness of governance that we, we, you report that you reflected in the health system is part of the weakness in governance across political systems in the round. It's not just health, just the, the, the most recent um, focus because of the, the large amounts of funding that were pivoted towards the pandemic response. Certainly, and political will, I would say. Um, Doctor, just lastly, speak oh. to us about this uh, conference that's going to be taking place. Anybody who wishes to follow or participate, um, it's a crucial one in health care. Whether you like it or not, it affects absolutely everybody. 
Absolutely. Um, this, uh, the conference will take place between the 5th and the 8th of March in Kigali, in the uh, um, convention centre there. Um, I think, I, I'm not absolutely sure, but there may be opportunities to follow some of the sessions online. Uh, it will be gathering, uh, um, like I said, public health professionals, scientists, civil society leaders, political, civil, from across the African system to come together to say, how do we make things better? How do we take charge of our own health, our own health needs, and the solutions that we need to improve our, the health experiences of our citizens? Okay, great. Thank you so much for your insights. We really do appreciate and wish you all the best uh, with your participation at the uh, conference. That was Dr. Ebede Okereke, who is an honorary senior public health advisor to Africa CDC.